Nick mentions I guess might be ready around today or soon. When the last time we spoke with you, is he going to be able to play tonight, or is he still? He, he won't play tonight. Um, he he looks ready. We'll have another conversation when I say that. It, it just having three days off. Um, not ideal to put him in tonight. Um, unfortunately, if had we practiced, I think the last three days uh, he would probably be good to go. So he's very, very close. How difficult for every team in this league is this game tonight? Just in terms of knowing what you're going to get from your guys. It's a different, different uh, game for everybody. All coaches, all management uh, players. You know, that's, these guys don't have breaks like this. Um, so it's, I think it's good for the entire league to have that break. I think everybody will, you know, enjoy uh, a couple days and some downtime that you don't get, um, extended downtime. And yet on the other side of it is the great unknown, how, how each guy's going to feel, lots of travel, lots of different things going on. Um, so time will tell how we, how we feel about it. With every team not practicing for the last, what, three days now, might we see some sloppy hockey in the NHL today just because you, nobody's practiced? I mean, until the morning skate. Paul, you see sloppy hockey in the NHL all the time. So, yeah, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure there'll be moments of uh, of that. But it, it's there. I mean, it's it's a fast-paced game. And, you know, there's, uh, there's things you can say are sloppy every single night because of the pace of the game. It's not a set play, and you don't have a minute uh, to, to, to design a play. It's flow and go, and fatigue enters it uh, quite a bit. Uh, when you see mistakes in the NHL, and um, tonight, again, who knows? And they need to get back to that. Maybe he he didn't show the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I think it's less of what he needs to get back to, and more of consistently what he can do really well. Uh, when he's when he's on his game, the consistency, you know, his his challenge is consistency and doing what he does at his best, consistently hitting the repeat button on it, not having lapses. Um, so, you know, he's, he's moved along in his career uh, quite a ways now. He's not a young guy anymore. He's a young guy, but he's, not a, he's got a lots of experience now. And, um, you know, for him, what he does well, if he does it really consistently, well, he's, he's one heck of a hockey player. Is he back in tonight? He is not. Uh, I was talking to Dylan Cousins. And, you know, you're starting to get some points out of him now on a regular Basis, but he admitted that the contract was on his mind and he had to stop worrying about those things. And you've had a lot of guys who signed these deals. And just, I think you expected as a group that maybe that would impact some guys, but has it been more of a factor than you thought with some of them? Or, you know, so many guys signing big money deals at the same time? It's new territory It's for, for the entire group um, and the organizations. Territory, you know, they're, you're, the expectations have risen to a level. The group in their you know, was was the reason they they elevated the expectations, and now it's new territory for everybody to manage. Uh, and yes, um, I think that I don't mean yes to your question, but to the point of guys feel differently. You know, it's the first time these guys have been on you know long term deals that signify okay, you're here and you're here because we believe you can win. I think everything before that it was an evaluation. Do you give a guy? A long-term deal and what type of deal? And yes, we have several guys that, that entered this year, uh, the first year of significant deals, and feel pressure. I mean, you could you could look at Connor Clifton and put him in the same boat. I know Connor very well. I know you know there was there's added pressure on him. This is his first new organization with greater expectations uh, and, and a contract that goes with it. So you have him, Thompson, uh, Samuelson. Um, Obviously, cousins you mentioned and more. Don, what have you seen from Gage as he's returned from injury? And just given the nature of the injury, a guy who puts a lot of pressure on himself to produce, how have you seen him work his way back to just being sort of in midseason form? It's tough to get out of the lineup for a few weeks, then you add on everything else, all the other factors. Yeah, I think he's still getting back to that only because of the injury. I think he, you know, like these. These guys, him and, and Tuck, you come back way before you're healed, but you can play. And so now you're playing at a percentage of your game. You know, we saw it a year ago with old, with Victor Olofsson or two years ago where he, you know, he had a, at that time he had a wrist injury and it was undisclosed. It was an upper body, but he couldn't shoot a puck. And he's not the way he, Victor Olofsson could. So, you know, th these guys come back and they're only at a percentage, uh, but they're doing their best to help us. And... You know, for Tej, I think just in the last, I think this break was really helpful and will be helpful for Tej. 
um, and, and other guys that are nursing nagging things. But but Tomer came back before he was 100 percent. I think now he's finally just getting to 100 percent, and that is going to be. And, and I can see that. I can see him feeling better. He can feel the puck better. Obviously, he had a hand injury. You lose some feel with the puck when you're you're wearing different mechanisms on your hand to protect it until you're fully healed. And uh, now he's finally got that opportunity, and I can you can see he's he's much better as a result. Now, we all know how good the Boston Bruins are, but the game in Boston, you were the better team and you won the game. I mean, you guys did very very well. Why were you guys the better team? What did you guys do in that game that made you play so well? Well, I mean, I think it's it's we need to play our game every night, and I think when you do, you can you can kind of set the pace. Um, you know, if we're on our game, we're the ones setting the pace. I felt we did that, uh, you know, um, very well. You're not going to dominate 60 full minutes against anybody, let alone uh, you know the top teams in the league. Um, but you can, you know, we need to establish, uh, you know, our pace, our style of game, and usually the team that is able to do that is feels good about things. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we had good jump and good legs that night, and uh, it worked out well. The team is trying to wait you out and trying to wait for you to make a mistake. How do you, when you try to push that pace on them, how do you, how do, you do that without doing it, pushing the button at the wrong time? Well, number one, you got to be aware of who's on the ice. You know, they're, they're top scorers and the guys that can convert mistakes and, and with that manage the puck well, take care of the puck very well. Um, you know, patient teams wait for you to make a mistake, and most of the times you make it with the puck. Um, you know, a turnover, and it's hard to defend. You know, for one or two seconds right after a turnover, you're you're compromised. You thought you were on offense, and you're three or four other guys that didn't have the puck were going and thinking offense, and it's turnover. So you, you really, you know, it's not a it's not a defensive breakdown. It's an offensive breakdown. Um, and you want to avoid those uh, against anybody. You know, the other night, Panarin and Zabinijed, uh, you know, they're they're lurking for those and feed off of mistakes. Um, so, no different tonight, and no different really uh, any night in this league. Um, with the salary cap, you have superstars on every team now, and uh, you want to avoid uh, giving them <coughs> anything easy. Is there any, any difference in how the Bruins play? I mean, we're through half the season now without Bergeron and Krejci. Have they been a, a different team at all in that respect? They, they, the style and the system they play is, is still virtually the same. I mean, if they've made tweaks, it's, uh, you know, the, the foundation is still the same. So uh, they're the same team, um, you know, a diff few different pieces, I guess, uh, but the same style of play. And, you know, they, they, they're, they have a group of, very competent defensemen, and, and obviously the goaltending has continued to be strong, and they're they're built on that. Don, what have you made of Jack Quinn since since he's returned to the lineup? Uh, he's uh, f first of all what he does for everybody. Um, he, he's very good on the penalty kill, uh, very good on the power play, and he he really uh, gives us depth now. Cousins and Paterka have such chemistry with with Jack and. That is something we didn't have, that depth. Um, you know, you, you, you now have three-line depth that can score. And that now allows you to have a scoring line against third-pairing D in the NHL, and that is enormous uh, if you want to be successful in this league, if you can have that offset. And he's really, uh, he's, you know, he, he's good outright, but, but he also helps the team in adding, you know, more healthy bodies back in. Uh, that, that changes the dynamic of everything. Uh, for us and the team that's playing against us. Uh, but very intelligent player, makes others better, and plays in all situations. Uh, does it five on five, penalty kill and power play. Thank you, guys. Thank you.